Welcome to EPG Pathshala. I'm Nisha Irene Vanmati from the English and Foreign Languages University. Today, we are going to introduce language in visual manual modality. Let's get started. Sign language. What is sign language? Sign language is the principal language of the deaf community. Since deaf people cannot hear, because they don't have access to sounds, they cannot use spoken language like hearing people. So they adopt a sign language system consists of signs instead of sounds. So sign language is basically a soundless language where sounds are replaced by signs. Sign language is not modeled on any existing spoken language. That is, sign language doesn't follow the pattern or grammar of any spoken language. It is a naturally occurring language. It has its own independent structure and grammar. Just like spoken language, there are varieties in sign language. Some of the standard varieties of sign language are British Sign Language BSL, American Sign Language ASL and Indian Sign Language ISL. It exhibits differences in lexicon as well as syntactic structure. Even within Indian Sign Language, we have regional variations like Mumbai variety of Indian Sign Language, Kolkata variety of Indian Sign Language, Hyderabad variety of Indian Sign Language and so on. In the Mumbai variety of Indian Sign Language, the word order is found to be SOV, whereas in the in in the Hyderabad variety of Indian Sign Language, the word order is largely SVO. Modularity of Mind, Modality Independence The study of sign language follows from the claim that language instantiation is independent of its modality. So what do we mean by modality independence? Let's look at what Chomsky says about language. The language faculty is an innate component of the human mind that yields a particular language through interaction with presented experience, a device that converts experience into a system of knowledge. That is, language is an innate component in the human brain. Language is generated in the brain. Let's see what modularity hypothesis says. According to the hypothesis of the modularity of mind, Language is a separate module in the brain differentiated from other cognitive systems such as reasoning or learning. That is, there are several modules in the brain and language is one of the modules that is not connected to any other module. That is, language is an independent module. So language needs an external medium. It needs a physical entity for it to be expressed. Since language is an independent module, it makes use of any available medium. In the case of spoken language, the physical entity is sound and it uses the medium oral oral. That is, it is spoken language is produced orally and perceived orally. Whereas in the case of sign language, it is produced in the visual manual medium. That is, it is produced manually and perceived visually. Brain lateralization of sign language. We all know that our brain, our human brain is divided into two hemispheres, the right and the left hemisphere. The left hemisphere in the brain controls linguistic abilities, that is comprehension and production. There is an area in the left hemisphere called Broca's area, which is responsible for language production. Damage to Broca's area will lead to effortful language production. That is, in the case of spoken language, the speaker attempts to produce a word, but he fails to articulate it. So, what Emory says, let's see. Emory reports studies on deaf signers that the neural circuits that help in the processing of spoken language also processes sign language. 
So deaf signers who have lesions in the left frontal cortex exhibit Broca's aphasia-like symptoms such as effortful signing. So this, this shows that the neural circuits responsible for language functions remain impartial to language in different modalities. Elements of sign language Signs are the basic lexical units in sign language comprised of both manual and non-manual signs. Manual signs are produced using hand shape, hand location and hand movement. Hand shape plays a central role in the production of signs. It is the shape that the hand forms using fingers. Closed fist hand shape, V hand shape, L hand shape and so on. Hand location. Hand location is the position where the hand is placed in front of sinus body. Hand movement. Hand movement is the direction in which the hand moves. Hand shape, location and movement, these are the formational elements of sign. Handedness. In sign language, there are one-handed signs as well as two-handed signs. In the case of two-handed signs, there will be one dominant hand and the other passive hand. Sometimes signers show handedness. They keep either left hand as a dominant hand or right hand as a dominant hand. This is called handedness in sign language. Manual signs include iconic and non-iconic signs. Iconic signs. Iconic signs are mimetic signs which have one-to-one -one rel relation between the sign and the meaning. That is, iconic means that the form of symbol is an icon or representation of some aspect of the thing or activity being symbolized. For example, eat, give, write. These are the signs which have one-to-one -one relation between the sign and the meaning. These are called iconic signs. Non-iconic signs. Non-iconic signs do not have an one-to-one -one relation between the sign and the meaning. They are arbitrary and do not reflect the form of the thing or activity being symbolized. For example, easy, allow. These signs do not have one-to-one -one relation between the sign and the meaning and they are arbitrary. Body posture. The body space for sign language is restricted to the upper part of, part of the body and head. Even though in mimes and dance, the meaning is expressed through signs and gestures, they use a wide space. For example, to show someone sweeping the floor, they act out the event by stooping down and sweeping. But in sign language, the signer cannot afford to place the hand form beyond, beyond the location, that is, the upper part of the body and head. Non-manual markers. Apart from the manual signs, there are also non-manual signs or non-manual markers in sign language. The non-manual markers include facial expressions, head and upper body movements. Non-manual markers are grammatical markers that constitute the syntax of sign language. They denote various functional elements in sign language. The evidence that sign language is a natural language comes from the functional categories such as yes-no question elements, pronominals, reflexes, agreement features and so on. These are manifested in the non-manual markers. Let us look at an example. In the Hyderabad variety of Indian sign language, a yes-no question element is expressed as a non-manual marker that consists of lowered or raised eyebrows with a head tilt and the body bent slightly forward. Example, you come. This is a simple sentence. Now, with the non-manual markers. You come. 
Now, this is a yes-no question construction. Here we see the non-manual markers differentiate a simple sentence from a yes-no question construction. Non-native and native acquisition of sign language. In every deaf community, only 5 to 10 percent of deaf children are born to deaf parents and they acquire sign language natively. The rest 90 percent of deaf children are born to hearing parents. Hearing parents do not use sign language and the deaf children since they do not have access to sounds they fail to master spoken language due to profound deafness and they are exposed to a manually coded spoken language data. Eventually deaf children come up with a gestural communication using idiosyncratic signs a system called home science and Sengas 1995 her work on the Nicaraguan signing community characterizes the difference between non-native and native acquisition of sign language on the basis of pidgin and creole pidgin and creole when people belonging to different language background come into contact for trade or other purposes and they start interacting with each other a crude form of language evolves within the community this is called pidgin a pidgin is a crude form of language which emerges in situations of language contact it has little or no grammar when children are born to pidgin speaking parents they normalize the pigeon into its creole version that is the creole version will have enhanced sentence structures creole languages show complex grammatical structures like those of natural language our nicaraguan signing community studied by sangas it serves as a good example for the above set situation the nicaraguan signing community when a public school for special education was first established in Nicaragua, the first generation of entrants in the Nicaraguan signing community came each with their own idiosyncratic system of home signs. These home signers came into contact and gave birth to a pidgin sign language, Lenguaje de Signos Nicaraguanese, LSN. It is characterized as pidgin because of its lack of grammatical complexity. A second generation of deaf, deaf children joined the school when they were as young as four years old. They came into contact with their older peers and their signing system, Ellison. What emerged from them was a richer version of Ellison, exhibiting complex sentence structures with inflections agreement markers and classifiers. The new enhanced Creole version of Ellison was named Idioma de Signos Nicaragonese ISN. The growth of ISN from the Ellison. The growth of the Creole ISN from the Pigeon Ellison can be shown with respect to the use of classifiers and verbal inflections. In the Creole ISN, the mimetic signs were reanalyzed as classifiers. Let us see some examples. Classifiers Language can indicate classes such as animal, human, round things, etc. These are known as semantic or object classifiers. In sign language, hand shapes are used to indicate classifiers reflecting various semantic classes. For example, in ASL, bus crashed. It is signed as bus, vehicle, crashed, where vehicle is the object classifier. In the Nicaraguan signing community, we have the following classifiers. A flat hand with palm down. It's a vehicle classifier and an inverted L shape 
small animal classifier and a V hand shape. This is pointing downward. This is human classifier. So the next is size and shape classifiers. Size and shape classifiers denote the size and shape of a noun. An extended index finger denotes long or narrow objects. Extended index finger. Long or narrow objects. A loosely cupped hand denotes tall cylindrical objects. A loosely cupped hand denotes tall cylindrical objects such as bottles, cups, etc. The pigeon Ellison consisted of more mimetic signs whereas the Creole ISN had fewer mimetic signs. Let us look at an example. In the pigeon Ellison for the sentence the man took a coin from his pocket. The first generation signers acted out the event by putting fingers into the pocket and shaped as if they were holding a coin. But in the Creole ISN, the second generation signers subsumed a container classifier to indicate the source of the coin and they used size and shape classifier to identify the object. Verbal inflections. In sign language, the locations in the signing space are used as referential indices to denote nouns. That is, in the signing space, the signer assigns an index to refer to nouns. The signer sets up two locations for he and her. Suppose he and her. And to show he looks at her, the verb move from he looks at her. And to say she looks at him, the verb would be she looks at him. So the movement of the verb, he looks at her, she looks at him. The movement of the verb between the two referential loci carries the inflection of agreement in sign language. So what we have understood from this module is that the very presence of the functional elements in sign language shows that sign language is indeed a natural language. And the evolution of sign language in the Nicaraguan signing community from the pigeon Ellison to the Creole ISN provides an insight into the language transition brought about by children. While the first generation of work on sign language focused on the formal linguistic properties of sign language, the second generation of work moved to the formal properties of language in the visual manual medium that is iconicity which can shed light on the nature of language. Thank you.